हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल आई एम अशिता योर फिजिक्स मेट एंड इन दिस चैनल दिस इज़ माई फर्स्ट वीडियो एंड ऑफकोर्स फ्राम द नेम ऑफ दिस चैनल यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट द टॉपिक्स ऑफ माई वीडियोज विल बी समेयर अबाउट फिजिक्स सो दैट टू डेज टॉपिक विच ऑन विच आई एम गोइंग टू गिव सम एक्सप्लेशन इज गीजर इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड एज दिस इज माई फर्स्ट वीडियो आई I wish that you will like it, and if you like this video, then feel free to share this video and subscribe to my channel, and please like it. Uh, and for further videos, uh, if you have any kind of uh, suggestions, so please feel free to write it in the comment section below so that I can make videos further on them. And uh, let's get started. well our today's video is piezoelectric effect the word piezoelectric comes from a greek word the word piezoelectric is divided into two parts one part is piezo and the another part is electric well the word piezo comes from the word piezing which is a greek word and the meaning of this word is to press or to squeeze something so as the word piezoelectric is divided into two parts the first part is piezo that is the pressure and the second part is electric so it of course means that the pressure is converted into electricity that is a form of energy which is a mechanical energy which is pressure or stress is just converted into electric energy and the word transducer well transducer is basically a device which converts a form of energy into another form of energy and in this kind of crystals or in this kind of transducer where a mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy is called a piezoelectric transducer and those class of crystals which show this kind of behavior are called piezoelectric crystals so this behavior was firstly discovered by pierre curie and jacques curie in the year 1880 they saw that there is a finite class of crystals on them if we apply stress or pressure or force from outside then there is a potential generated inside the crystal the basic uh, examples of this kind of crystals are rothschild salt quartz which is of the most used that is silicon dioxide and barium titanate well just one year later gabriel lipman in the year 1881 so just the reverse effect of this or just the vice versa what he saw he saw that if we apply a potential difference from outside in this kind of crystals then a stress is generated inside the crystal that is just the reverse effect and this is called inverse piezoelectric effect so why this is happening we will discuss in this video of course just beforehand i told you that this kind of crystals have a finite class that is they are non centrosymmetric so in this crystal there is basically you can see this is a silicon dioxide crystal this is a basic structure of silicon dioxide that is quartz crystal and here you can see the silicon atoms are positive and the oxygen atoms are negative so the center of symmetry where the plus charges center and minus charges center reside in the first picture it is in the same place that is the plus charge center and minus charge center are in the same place so that they overlap 
on each other and there is no difference between them they are just they just overlap on each other and so that there is no internal potential difference between them so okay it's fine but when we apply pressure from outside that is we apply tension in any direction like in the in this picture you can see that here we are applying pressure in this direction from outside we are just stretching it outside and here in this picture we are compressing it right we are just compressing or stretching something this uh, crystals if you do that then what happens then actually the center of the plus charges and the center of the minus charges are no longer in the same place they are basically displaced and as they are displaced there is a basic distance between them and if you have two charges and they are displaced and they are a little in a little distance they are of course polarized so this crystals are then polarized and there is a potential difference inside the crystal that is generated inside a crystal so we are applying a pressure from outside but we are getting something in terms of a potential that is in terms of a electrical energy in the second picture you also can see that here in this picture you can see the plus and minus charges are on the same place but when we are squeezing this crystal or we are applying pressure then the charge centers are displaced from one another and so this makes a potential difference inside this crystal and this is how that pressure energy is converted into electrical energy in this crystals the same thing also happens in just um, reverse phenomena that is if we apply uh, uh, a potential difference from outside then also it it makes them to vibrate or uh, in this case they just uh, convert it into mechanical stress right so in this phenomena the electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy and this is called a reverse piezoelectric effect so if you uh, do some practical implementation with them uh, so there is a practical in bsc course uh, where we find the coupling coefficient for piezoelectric crystal so what is coupling coefficient basically in piezoelectric crystals we uh, just convert mechanical energy into electrical energy or vice versa depending on which phenomena you are going through that is piezoelectric or reverse piezoelectric so here if we apply mechanical energy and we convert it into electrical energy that is piezoelectric effect then the coupling coefficient is electrical energy divided by mechanical energy that is how much portion of mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy is called the coupling coefficient and uh, if we do the inverse piezoelectric effect in that scenario we are applying electrical energy from outside and we are getting mechanical stress for that so how much portion of the electrical energy is converted into mechanical energy is also called the coupling coefficient but it is for the reverse piezoelectric effect well here we can see a circuit right uh, so through this circuit practically we find this coupling coefficient and of course which uh, definitely gives us uh, how much portion of those energy can be converted and if uh, the portion is uh, just one that means the full amount of energy is converted into that that is the full amount of mechanical energy is converted into electrical or the vice versa that is coupling coefficient is one and that is called tight coupling right so here in this uh, figure you can see uh, here we have a circuit and this is a piezoelectric crystal okay and these two are two conducting metal plates with which we are uh, connecting a wire through which a resistance 
an inductance and a capacitance is connected in series that is series LCR circuit. And we all know that series LCR circuit has a certain frequency and this piezoelectric crystal is connected with some external AC source, okay, AC voltage source. And a milliammeter is connected in series which is an AC ammeter and a AC voltmeter is connected in parallel with this piezoelectric crystal. So when we are applying an AC voltage from outside, of course, this electricity or this electric energy will be converted into some stress or mechanical stress, right? Inside this piezoelectric crystal. And as this is an AC source, this is not a DC source. So, as this is an AC source, of course, in this scenario, this piezoelectric crystal will start to vibrate, right? Or will start to oscillate. And of course, if this crystal is oscillating, it will definitely have a finite frequency of oscillation. And if this frequency of oscillation is equal to the frequency of oscillation of this LCR series circuit, in that scenario, the current inside this uh, circuit will be the highest. That is the resonance. At the time of resonance, what happens? This, this frequency of the oscillation for this uh, piezoelectric crystal and frequency of oscillation for this LCR series circuit will be the same and when they will resonate with one another resonance will happen and the current will be maximum in this circuit okay so in that case if we find a graphical plotting you can see that here we are uh, just plotting a uh, graph between the impedance and the frequency basically what is the impedance impedance is V by I that is voltage by the current and if we are getting maximum current in that scenario we will get the minimum impedance that is impedance is inversely proportional with the current right. So if we are plotting the uh, voltage versus current curve right and you can uh, just find them with the help of this milliammeter and voltmeter which is connected across the circuit. So, you can definitely find the amount of impedance in the circuit and if you plot the amount of impedance with frequency that is you are changing the frequency of the source with respect to which the frequency of this piezoelectric crystal will start to change and so that the voltage and current will of course change with that you can find the amount of Z that is impedance and you can plot it in the graph. So, when the impedance is minimum, of course, the current will be maximum. You can uh, also do this with current. When it will be minimum, the current will be then maximum. And when it is maximum, the current will be then minimum. That is like uh, this, if I draw, it will be like that, right? Just inverse of that. Okay. So, when the z is minimum i will be maximum and when z is maximum i will be minimum of course when current is maximum that is the series frequency frequency of series resonance and when the current is minimum that is the anti resonance frequency right this is called fa and fs is the series resonance that is when the current is maximum and this coupling coefficient can be calculated from this working formula which can be uh, these uh, values can be found from the graph and this graph can be done by using just this uh, operation which I explained in this uh, video. So you can find the coupling coefficient from this uh, just uh, working formula if a is the anti resonance or this point right when the current is minimum if a is the resonance frequency when the current is maximum and if you just uh, uh, 
subtract fs from fa and divide it with the value of fs you can find the coupling coefficient so it is a very easy practical you can also use this practical by uh, this method so that you can find the coupling coefficient of any kind of piezoelectric crystal okay uh, so it is all about today's video and here is of course a picture which shows that you are applying a this is a dc battery so this is a dc source and if you apply a dc source you will get just a stress inside this uh, crystal and in instead of this dc source if you apply any kind of ac source then this uh, crystal will start to vibrate or to oscillate okay so well this is all about today's video i think you have uh, learned from this video a little bit something and uh, of course if you like this video and if you are uh, uh, you want much more videos from me then uh, please uh, share my videos and uh, like uh, my videos and please subscribe to my channel and if you have any kind of suggestion about this video or any kind of topic which you can suggest me on them i can make videos further uh, well thank you so much for listening and uh, thank you